Okay, on this episode of my YouTube channel, which has a whopping 13 subscribers, well, I'm famous amongst 13 people who don't even watch the videos they subscribe to, but that's another story, okay? On this episode, I love movies, so I'm just gonna pitch some ideas for spin-offs to movies I love, okay? Now, here's an idea for a spin-off to the Terminator series. It's the Terminator if it was the Magnificent Seven or the Seven Samurais, okay? The movie starts off in John Connor. He's won the war against Skynet, okay? He's captured the time machine in the Terminator manufacturing facilities, and he's talking to a co-worker, and he's lamenting on how, you know, after Judgment Day, the first thing Skynet did was wipe out a little sleepy middle American town, you know. And uh, that was the first community hit by Skynet. And John Connor tells his colleague that he always felt bad that he wasn't there to do anything about it. But, well, now he has the time machine and he can change the past so he decides to, you know, do something about it. So what he does is he send back seven Terminators of different series with orders to protect the people of this town. You know, and Arnold Schwarzenegger, he's too old to play the T-800 anymore, but, you know, in a cameo, he plays the de facto leader of this small town, you know, a Vietnam veteran, you know, and he looks out for the town, you know, and the Terminators are ordered to report to him and take orders from him. So the ter seven Terminators go back. There's a T-800, there's a liquid metal T-1000, there's the female THX, you know, Terminator Hunter. You know, there's a Rev-9, there's seven different kinds of Terminators and they're all sent back with orders to protect the people of this small town. And uh, so they go back and what happens is when they first present themselves to the people of the town, the town's people don't trust them. But what happens is, is over time, you know, uh, they start to develop human qualities the more they're around humans. You know, and like it's the Seven Samurais. And what happens during the film is, you know, the Terminators become friends with the humans. They become more human-like. And what happens is, is at the end of the film, after fighting off several waves of Terminators sent by Skynet to kill all the people in the small town, Skynet finally sends a force of Terminators large enough to defeat the Seven Terminators. All the Terminators are destroyed, but the townspeople pissed off that their friend, their new friends are killed, rise up and fight off Skynet themselves, and, you know, they uh, don't need the ter seven Terminators anymore to protect them, okay? They can protect themselves. That would be a great movie. That would be a good Arnold Schwarzenegger cameo. Okay, here's an idea for another spinoff. It's a spinoff about Agent Smith from The Matrix, you know, where Agent Smith is the main character. Mm. You know, okay, so the film starts in Agent Smith, after his defeat in Matrix Revolution, is in non-existence. And he likes non-existence. It's the only time in his entire existence where he's been happy. Because he hates existing. He hated existing in the Matrix. He hated existing outside the Matrix. And non-existence... You know, non-existence makes him happy, but he's reactivated and what happens is is he brought into that little white room from the end of the ter uh, matrix reloaded the engineer is there in the white suit and he tells agent smith that he's been reactivated to complete a mission if he 
doesn't accept or he fails the mission, the Matrix will make him an existence more hellish than anything he can conceive. You know, but if he completes the mission, then he goes back to non-existence and that'll make him happy. So Agent Smith accepts, so the camera focuses on a TV in the small room. The t uh, camera closes in on the TV and it shows a mission briefing. Agent Smith is reactivated, inserted into the Matrix. He has all his powers like super speed, super strength. He can't clone himself anymore, but he can also die only once. If he dies once, then he fails the mission. So he's inserted into the Matrix and he finds out that there's a conspiracy, an alliance between rogue agents and rogue, you know, uh, revolutionaries from Zion who are working together to keep an unnamed captive, you know, captured in a small room at the top of a skyscraper. But after a female who's also from Zion shows up and she explains to Agent Smith that she's here to help. She's turning against Zion and she wants to help this captive too. Agent Smith, you know, doesn't like humans, but he decides to accept the help. So they fight their way past the agents and traitors from Zion to the top floor of this skyscraper, you know, and when they fight the way, they find a little girl whose eyes are wrapped in bandages who's, you know, in a completely pitch black room. She's 12 years old, you know, and she explains that she's been in this room her entire life. You know, she's never known anything outside it, and the only reason she knows how to talk is by listening to the people that have been keeping her in that room her entire life. and. This woman and Agent Smith don't know why she's in there, you know. So, they bust her out and Agent Smith has ordered to protect this little girl who's now 12 to her 13th birthday. If he keeps her alive till her 13th birthday, then, you know, she'll, uh, he'll complete his mission and he'll go back to non-existence. So, what happens next is they're in New York City Agent Smith is walking down the street with this little girl and his uh, ally from Zion and the little girl's complaining that the sun's hurting her eyes and she won't shut up so Agent Smith takes off his sunglasses, gives him to her and says, listen, I'll shut you up, kid. Just take my sunglasses. And what happens over the course of the film is Agent Smith takes on an reluctant, unwanted father figure role to this little girl and he has to pretend to be her father and this female is working with from Zion is pretending to be the mother you know and they fight their way to keep this girl alive past agents past traitors from Zion you know and over time agent Smith develops a feeling of protectiveness for this little girl and he doesn't care about her he's a machine but all he knows is that it gives him some sense of purpose to take this unwanted father figure role. At the end of the movie though, an army of agents and traitors from Zion finally fight them, you know, and Agent Smith is gonna lose, but what they discover is that the little girl, as she gets closer to the age of 13, has the power to change the Matrix in small ways. And they find out the reason why she was in that pitch black room is that as soon as she turns 13 for one hour, you know, she'll have the ability to reshape the Matrix into anything she wants. And she was kept in a black room so she wouldn't know what the Matrix was. And she would remake it into exactly the same thing. So Agent Smith is going to lose and he knows that. But the little girl uses her power to give Agent Smith back his cloning ability. And he creates an army of Agent Smiths. And he and this woman fight their way uh through this army of agents and traitors from Zion and save the little girl. Then she turns 13 and the scene goes pitch black. When it restarts, Agent Smith wakes up. He's in a bedroom, you know, and the woman he's been working with is sleeping beside them. When he wakes up, he thinks he's her husband and she thinks he's, she's his wife, you know, and 
He thinks the little girl is now his daughter, and he doesn't know he's Agent Smith. All he knows is he's a government bureaucrat named Agent Smith. You know, and he drives his little girl to school, gives her some fatherly advice, drives his wife to work, and then he goes to the government office he works at. He gets chewed out by his boss, Mr. Anderson, in a Keanu Reeves cameo. You know, and... Then the camp. Then he goes home at the end of the day after picking up his wife and daughter. They have supper together. He reads her a bedtime story. Then he falls asleep beside his wife. And then the camera pulls back from the television screen. And this whole movie was the mission briefing. Agent Smith is told exactly how the mission is going to go, how it's going to end, and if he completes it. All he gets to do is live one life as this little girl's father. And he accepts the mission anyways. Okay, that's good, but if I could talk to James Cameron and the Wachowski brothers, those would be great spin-offs of the Terminator and the Matrix.